Section 7 of Our Cats and All About Them. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Anne Boulay. Our Cats and All About Them by Harrison Weir. Section 7. The Russian Long-Haired Cat. The above is a portrait of a cat given me many years ago, whose parents came from Russia, but from what part I could never ascertain. It differed from the Angora and the Persian in many respects. It was larger in body with shorter legs. The mane or frill was very large, long and dense, and more of a woolly texture, with coarse hairs among it. The color was of dark tabby, though the markings were not a decided black, nor clear and distinct. The ground color was wanting in that depth and richness possessed by the Persian, having a somewhat dull appearance. The eyes were large and prominent, of a bright orange, slightly tinted with green. The ears large by comparison, with small tufts, full of long woolly hair, the limbs stout and short, the tail being very dissimilar, as it was short, very woolly, and thickly covered with hair the same length from the base to the tip and much resembled in form that of the English wild cat. Its motion was not so agile as other cats, nor did it apparently care for warmth, as it liked being outdoors in the coldest weather. Another peculiarity being that it seemed to care little in the way of watching birds for the purpose of food. Neither were its habits like those of the short-haired cats that were its companions. It attached itself to no person, as was the case with some of the others, but curiously took a particular fancy to one of my short-haired, silver-gray tabbies. The two appeared always together. In front of the fire they sat side by side. If one left the room, the other followed. Adown the garden pass there they were, still companions, and at night slept in the same box. They drank milk from the same saucer, and fed from the same plate. And, in fact, only seemed to exist for each other. In all my experience, I never knew a more devoted couple. I bred but one kitten from the Russian, and this was the offspring of the short-haired silver tabby. It was black and white, and resembled the Russian in a large degree, having a woolly coat, somewhat of a mane, and a short, very bushy tail. This, like his father, seemed also to be fonder of animals for food than birds and although very small, would without any hesitation attack and kill a full-grown rat. I have seen several Russian cats, yet never but on this occasion had the opportunity of comparing their habits and mode of life with those of the other varieties. Neither have I seen any but those of a tabby color, and they mostly of a dark brown. I am fully aware that many cross-bred cats are sold as Russian, Angora, and Persian, either between these or the short-haired, and some of these, of course, retain in large degree the distinctive peculiarities of each breed. Yet to the practice eye there is generally, I do not say always, a difference of some sort by which the particular breed may be clearly defined. When the prizes are given, as in the case even at our largest cat shows, for the best long-haired cat, there, of course, exists in the eye of a judge no distinction as regards breed. He selects, as he is bound to do, that which is the best long-haired cat in all points, the length of hair, color, texture, and condition of the exhibit being that which commands his first attention. But if it were so put, that the prize should be for the best Angora, Persian, Russian, etc., it would make the task rather more than difficult, for I have seen some first-cross cats that have possessed all, or nearly all, the points requisite for that of the Angora, Persian, or Russian, while others so bred have been very deficient, perhaps showing the Angora cross only by the tail and a slight and small frill. At the same time it must be noted that although from time to time some excellent specimens may be so bred, it is by no means desirable to buy and use such for stock purposes, for they will in all probability throw back. That is, after several generations, although allied with thoroughbred, they will possibly have a little family of quite short hairs. I have known this with rabbits, who after breeding short-haired varieties for some time, 
suddenly revert to a litter of long hairs, but have not carried out the experiment with cats. At the same time I may state that I have little or no doubt that such would be the case. Therefore I would urge on all those who are fond of cats, or in fact other animals, of any particular breed, to use when possible none but those of the purest pedigree, as this will tend to prevent much disappointment that might otherwise ensue. But I am digressing, and so back to my subject, the Russian long-haired cat. I advisedly say long-haired cat, for I shall hereafter have to treat of other cats coming from Russia that are short-haired, none which I have hitherto seen being tabbies, but whole color. This is the more singular, as all those of the long hair have been brown tabbies, with only one or two exceptions, which were black. It is just possible these were the offspring of tabby or gray parents, as the wild rabbit has been known to have had black progeny. I have seen a black rabbit shot from amongst the gray on the south downs. I do not remember having seen a white Russian long hair, and I should feel particularly obliged to any of my readers who could supply me with further information on this subject, or on any other relating to the various breeds of cats, cat life, and habits. I am fully aware that no two cats are exactly alike either in their form, color, movements, or habits. But what I have given much study and attention to, and what I wish to arrive at is, the broad existing natural distinctions of the different varieties. In this I shall feel grateful for any information. The above engraving and description of a very peculiar animal is from Daniel's Rural Sports, 1813. This cat was the property of Mrs. Finch of Malden, Essex. In the account of this Lucis Naturi, for such it may be deemed, the mother had no other likeness to her production than her color, which is a tawny sandy, in some parts lightly streaked with black. She had this, and another kitten like it, about two years since. The fellow kitten was killed, in consequence of being troublesome, to the mistress of the house, where it was presented. This is a male, above the usual size, with a shaggy appearance round its face, resembling that of the lion's, in miniature. The hair protruding from the ears, formerly grew, like what are termed corkscrew curls, and which are frequently seen among the smart young watermen on the Thames. The tail is perfectly distinct from that of the cat species, and resembles the brush of a fox. The mother has at this time three young ones, but without the least difference to common kittens. Neither, indeed, has she ever had any before or since, similar to that here described. The proprietor has been offered and refused one hundred pounds for this animal. This was either a cross with the English wild cat, which sometimes has a mane, or it was an accidental variation of nature. I once bred a long-haired rabbit in a similar way, but at first I failed entirely to perpetuate the peculiarity. I think the above simply a sport. I have now concluded my remarks on the long-haired varieties of cats that I am at present acquainted with. They are an exceedingly interesting section. Their habits, manners, forms, and colors form a by no means unprofitable study for those fond of animal life, as they, in my opinion, differ in many ways from those of their short-haired brethren. I shall not cease, however, in my endeavors to find out if any other long-haired breeds exist, and I am, therefore, making inquiries in every direction in which I deem it likely I shall get an increase of information on the subject, but hitherto without any success. Therefore, I am led to suppose that the three I have enumerated are the only domesticated long-haired varieties. The nearest approach, I believe, to these in the wild state is that of the British wild cat, which has in some instances a mane and a bushy tail, slightly resembling that of the Russian long hair, with much of the same facial expression, and rather pointed tufts at the apex of the ears. It is also large, like some of the long-haired cats that I have seen. In fact, it far more resembles these breeds than those of the short hair. I was much struck with the many points of solemnitude on seeing the British wild cat, exhibited by the Duke of Sutherland, at the first cat show at the Crystal Palace in July, 1871. 
I merely offer this as an idea for further consideration. At the same time, allow me to say that I have had no opportunity of studying the anatomy of the British wild cat, in contradistinction to that of the Russian, or others with long hair. I only wish to point out what I term a general resemblance, far in excess of those with short hair. I am fully aware how difficult it is to trace any origin of the domestic cat, or from what breeds. It is also said that the British wildcat is not one of them. Still, I urge there exists the similarity I mention. Whether it is so apparent to others, I know not. End of section 7